Yes, yes, great question. I see exactly what you're saying now. So the question is, can a portfolio of diversity, in other words, getting into new types of businesses, can that be a driver of sustainable, profitable growth? I would say yes, as long as, in my opinion, as long as when you add any new piece, you're focused with, with that piece. That the goal isn't to add, see how many new things we can add, but to add things that will add, create more appropriate value. A classic example, probably the classic example of the last 15 years is Apple, where they were just selling computers, and then they realized we could get into cell phones, and then they got into the music business, and then they got into the e-reader business. But if you notice, each time they added one thing, they focused all of their attention on just one thing at a time, as opposed to some other examples of companies that went zooming up because they added tons and tons of new services, but then they also came zooming down because they had tried to stretch themselves beyond what they were capable of doing well. So yes, I do believe that, but I do believe you have to move with focus. All right, one more here in Columbus, then we'll go back to Washington and online. Columbus? Two of the uh, important points that you make in searching for the hotspots for innovation are observing customers and talking with customers. In a large organization, how do you deal with the reality of a small customer-facing part of the organization as opposed to point-to-point -to -point where everybody can be involved with some level of customer interaction? So I think what you're asking me is there, within American Chemical Society, you deal with lots and lots of customers, but, but no, a lot of people within this organization are not dealing where they're interfacing with the customer. You know, I would recommend I would recommend that you try to really find for yourself a situation where you could take part of a day and go observe a customer deal with one of your products or services. So I'd have to actually break this down. I don't know what part of the company you're in. But any part of your organization, somewhere there's a point where some customer is receiving value from some part of your organization. And I would encourage you to go there. I mean, one of the things that I think that I've done over the years that has allowed me to learn so much is to find my way into those situations. For example, I did, a, uh, I did a seminar for a group of 80 union truck drivers. So I rode in the truck next to the truck driver on some yellow pages that was on a chair. And I, so I rode for 11 hours as he unloaded and loaded cars into the truck. Now that really was not part of my assignment. I was, my job was to give a seminar. But I wanted to see what his world was like so when I talked to the union truck drivers, I could relate to them. Even though it may not be in your job description and it may not fit exactly in your, your regular schedule, I would encourage you to find ways to insert yourself into some part of, even if it's just one customer. It's not like I rode with 20 truck drivers. I just rode with one. But at least I had a little bit of an insight. So I don't know if that exactly answers your question, but I definitely encourage people to get out of the office. There's a great, great 20-minute video that you can download on Google for free. And it's 15 years old, but it's great. It's called the shopping cart experience. So if you just put in to Google the shopping cart experience, it's about IDEO, and, you, and I think it will really fit in with what you're talking about right here. So I hopefully, hopefully that was of value. But I would encourage you to watch the shopping cart experience. And the book that goes with it is called The Art of Innovation by Tom Kelly. Uh, where are we going now? We're going to go to Washington. Washington. Um, this question is coming in on chat, and I think this probably ties back to um, your focus on accurate observation, but what can you tell us about the best way to identify areas of too much value? Oh, what are ways to figure out when the situation provides more value than the customer needs? I would suggest yes. that you look at, now this is, this is, another, this is another challenge. So, I'm suggesting that you look for situations where the customer is getting more value than they really need to achieve what he or she needs, and then look for how you can reduce the cost, whether it's time, energy, or money. Now, obviously, corporations, organizations don't want to reduce money because that's how you make a living. But you can reduce the time that the person needs to get that value. So another, I mean, I don't know exactly in your situation, but is the, is the customer getting more value than they really need? That's the first, that's the starting point. If you can say, yes, I believe they are, then the question is, could you create 
something that would provide them with less value, but enough value to achieve what they want to achieve, but that would save them time, or would save them uh, energy, where they don't have to work as hard, or possibly that would save them money. And you might say, well, why in the world? Oh my gosh, I just remember. I did a presentation for a manufacturing company, and we talked about this. And a, and a person came up to me and said, I like your idea about looking for ways to reduce value that would make it more appropriate, but my boss would kill me. And I said, what do you mean my boss would kill, your boss would kill you? She said, well, we, in this company, we sell a part that has to be replaced four times a year, and each time it costs $1 million. She said, we could make this last for a whole year, but we would lose $3 million. Now, that seems obvious that you would not change that. But what if the competition comes in with a product that would save the customer $3 million, the customer would move to the other organization. So while it might seem like you're actually reducing profits, you actually may be, you know, you might be saving a customer for the next 20 years. So how do you find a situation where it's too much value? I mean, I guess it's a moment of honesty, really. Is this more value than the customer really needs to achieve what he or she wants to achieve? And if you can say yes, then I think you need to look at the other parts. So I don't know if I perfectly answered that, but that's what comes to my mind. All right, um, maybe one more question from Washington. Anything here? We can take another question from chat, or do you want to, do you have questions there in the CAS auditorium? No, go right ahead from chat. OK. Um, oh, I'm sorry about that. What would, we're back to the, uh, the culture question here. What would you say is the single most important value in a corporate culture that will enable innovation? Lack of arrogance. I think um, it's a kind of a reverse answer. The worst value in a corporation that I have ever come across is arrogance. Arrogance is where a person thinks or a group of people think, we already have all the answers. We don't really need any other. We don't, I mean, we've got it all figured out. And every time I've seen that, oh my, I mean, literally, I could write it down. And then I could go back to you three or four years later, and either the person is no longer there, or the, or the success of that part of the organization has gone down dramatically. The arrogant person, someday I'm going to write a book called The Arrogant Executive, How to Ruin a Business in 10 Minutes or Less. <laughs> but the arrogant person or the arrogant group of people are the ones who think they've already got all the answers and they don't have to. There's nothing left to learn. That's dangerous. So I would suggest to you the most important value in creating an innovative culture, if that was the question, I would say the answer is lack of arrogance or open-mindedness, open-mindedness. I am going to recommend one more book while it's on my mind. There is a book called Mindset by a woman named Carol Dweck, who is a, I think she's a psychology professor at Stanford University, but Mindset, if you all are taking notes here, Mindset would be another book I would recommend, which is about the difference between people who have an open mind and think that they can always figure out how to get better, and people who have a closed mind who think this is it, this is, this, it ain't going to get no better than this. It's a, it's a great book. 